Over the past four years, ever since the last one closed, there have been talks about the need for a sobering center in Portland, somewhere that first responders can drop off people in drug-fueled crisis. And now, initial plans for such a place have been released. It's far from a done deal, but the farthest into this process that we've been since the pandemic started. Blair Best has a story. Beyond the tents, RVs and trash is pain. I've been a heroin addict for almost 50 years, or fentanyl now. Cam gets his drugs under this Central East Side overpass. It's dangerous. It's really, really, really powerful stuff. We were here two weeks ago. Going downhill is just, it's not good. When this man was withdrawing from fentanyl. My stomach is stabbing and my feet won't stop moving. Um, I just want to like yawn out and scream every about 30 seconds. A lot of people say that the kick isn't that bad from fentanyl. I think it's 10 times worse than heroin. In September of last year, Multnomah County Commissioners voted to put $150,000 toward planning and designing a 24-7 drop-off sobering center for people like the ones at this camp. Commissioner Julia Brim Edwards is leading the project. She released initial plans this week and is waiting to talk with KGW until they're approved. It's kind of like the drunk tank. Well, not exactly. It would be about 35 beds where first responders can take people in crisis, regardless of if they are willing to go or not, freeing up jails and emergency rooms. I mean, how long do they keep you in there? The plan is for one or two days, with the option of a third if the person is willing. But that's not long enough for people on fentanyl, Cam says. The mistaken assumption that five days you're clean, and that's not true. You know, you don't kick in five days. The sobering center staff would connect people with further treatment if available. The center would potentially open in about one to two years. A timeline Portlanders like Nolan Nez argue doesn't match the need. And our leadership continues to talk about how they have all these plans, 30 day plan, 90 day plan, a two year, two year wait on a sobering center. None of that is impacting anything that is happening on our streets right now. We don't have two years. These streets don't have two years. This is a clear and present issue on our streets right now. All right, so this two-year timeline is one that the county is calling aggressive, even though it could take much longer. But they're hoping to get things going as soon as next month, and it is expected to cost roughly $14 million each year to run it. Pat. Wow, spendy. Okay, Blair. And where you are right now, that's where this sobering center would be, is that right? Well, the county has a list of potential locations of where the sobering center could be, and we're told that this large white building here off Northwest 17th and Thurman is on that list. And take a look. Actually, last year we got to go inside the building. It's owned by a private developer, and it was supposed to be office space, but the owner couldn't find anyone to rent it given the current state of downtown. So instead, they decided to turn it into a mental health crisis center. It is centrally located for first responders, and it's near a hospital, criteria that the county is looking for when choosing a location here. All right, Blair, and this plan also seems to point out what the county cannot do, right? Right, that's true, and that includes residential treatment and services for people with severe mental illness, both critical pieces to a successful recovery system. But the county is essentially saying they don't have the capacity under this sobering center plan to address those pieces. And Julia Brim Edwards and her team is also calling out the county here, saying that compared to other cities across the country, they are not allocating enough money for sobering centers like this. All right, and the county has already had a sobering center, but it closed four years ago. It was run by Central City Concern, so this is something the city has needed for some time now, right? Right, and it feels like a little bit like deja vu here because two years ago, a city and county program, and I'm going to get it right for you here, the Behavioral Health Emergency Coordination Network, it's a mouthful, they essentially said the exact same thing that Julia Brim Edwards is saying now, and that's that someone needs to just set up a one-stop shop for people to go and get clean in downtown Portland. But two years ago, there were no takers and nothing really came of it, so... We'll see if things change this time around. Yeah, let's hope so. All right. Thanks so much, Blair. Appreciate it.